What is the future of food? Well, according to a recent article in The Guardian, by 2050, there'll be over 9 billion people on the planet that need to eat. And currently, we're using about 70% of our water on agriculture. So the fact remains that we need new choices that are ideally organic to feed our cities of the future. Today, we're talking to Green Spirit Farms and their innovative vertical growing system that's available on Kickstarter. Mylan Kluko from Green Spirit Farms is up next on Crowded Places. Hello everyone, thanks for watching Crowded Places, the web show that highlights Kickstarter projects and the people behind them. As always, I'm Curtis Hollister. Joining me today is Mylan Klutko of Green Spirit Farms. Mylan, welcome to the show. Thanks. So Mylan, you guys are in, uh, involved in some pretty interesting stuff with your vertical growing systems that you designed and, and basically are, are delivering now. Let's start with what are they and why are these things important? Well, the, the vertical growing station is comprised of six rotary gardens. Think of um, round uh, tire-like uh, devices that hold 80 plants, multiply that by six, and we can grow 480 plants in 36 square feet by taking advantage of vertical space. And we also use an innovative induction lamp, uh, which uses 75% uh, less electricity, and the entire process uses 90% less water than traditional farming. And that's obviously important because the inputs that go into creating the outputs are, are obviously how we measure the, the cost of our food, right? Correct. And the, the other novel aspect of this, it's not done in a greenhouse. These are uh, located on standard uh, pallet racking, if you will. Um, and we've designed them to use commercially available uh, tubing, hose, uh, these things that you can buy at a hardware store, Home Depot, things of that nature. Uh, depending where you live geographically. But the, the innovative thing is to do it inside of an old commercial warehouse building where you don't need a greenhouse, you don't need light. We control the water, the temperature, um, and, the, and the growing cycle. And they grow faster due to the rotation. And they, we have several, several crops um, that grow several times per year so we can locate the farm right in the center of town, theoretically. Wait. Which is very cool, obviously. We've heard about this kind of promise in the past, but you actually are, are doing it. One of the things that I find interesting about it is, is the temperature component of it. So a lot of these old warehouses, uh, I mean, they're going to be, they're not going to be heated necessarily. And, and you're located in Michigan. What kind of temperature does the warehouse need to be versus, like, what, what are the conditions around temperature that are important? Well, we've actually grown, uh, we've grown in this warehouse that we're growing now flat, not in the vertical growing station. Uh, but elevated, and we grew when the outside temperature was 20 degrees and the inside temperature was 55 degrees. Because the rotary gardens create their own microenvironment using the right type of lamp, the right type of light at the right temperature, um, inside the wheel or the cylinder, uh, it creates the components that we need uh, that Mother Nature would otherwise have in June, July, and August. So really, uh, temperature inside the warehouse building around 50 degrees. So, I mean, this is, sounds like a pretty smart idea. Why did you guys create this and what really sparked the idea for you? Well, we actually were working for a, a client that was looking at trying to get into vertical farming and we evaluated about a dozen different technologies that were in the beta stage or in the pilot stage, very small operations. And when we started looking at the rotary garden, we wanted to get it more vertical, truly more vertical as cheaply as possible and then basically add simple components to it to make the maintenance, the harvesting, the replanting as simple as possible. And that all these issues sort of conspired into the vertical growing station and it's worked, uh, it's worked pretty well um, flat. Uh, we've actually done it in the UK uh, flat as well. And we've added some elevation in a couple of stages, but now we are working on this to fully um, automate it. 
Yeah, obviously the vertical component of it lends it to space restrictions or 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 capacity innate as a capacity enabler. Obviously, I mean we're going to talk about the fact that you guys are on Kickstarter and that you're raising uh, a, a, a chunk of money uh, from backers there. But I mean you're aligned really with a pretty pretty hot trend. You know the organic food in industry is kind of on a rocket ship. You know, I, I look at Whole Foods in the States. These guys did $10 billion in sales in 2011, and that number's only going up. What's the future of this industry look like for, you know, say the next 10 years in, in somebody that's close to it like you are? Well, I look at what where we were last year at this time to just where we are this year. Uh, and in about that 10 to 12 month span, uh, not only have we been getting bombarded with can you grow this? How much can you grow? And to give you an example, inside of our building, it's about 35,000 square feet, so just under an acre of land. And we're growing the equivalent of almost 100 acres if it were full. And we're building it out, obviously. Um, so that relationship, then you can talk about the supply chain to a whole foods. Um, and there isn't enough local capacity because most of that capacity is international, believe it or not. And so what we're doing is we're counting food miles. So we've been providing on a limited basis local food stores with 12 food miles versus 1,200, or for the most part, for leafy greens, 2,200 miles. So we're eliminating the transportation. We're eliminating all that carbon that would be in the atmosphere. But we're also doing it at a little cheaper price, and we're doing it picked fresh the same day. So, so you're you're able to deliver this at a less of a price point than, than the people that are traditionally growing this in, say, the southern United States or Latin America? Yes, and, and the reason is, is transportation. The average service area for our vegetables, now we're only providing a small portion of those, like less than 1% right now. But our service area, when you look at where your, the food is coming from, the leafy greens, the tomatoes, the peppers that we're growing, cucumbers, um, they're coming from California, they're coming from Mexico, and in the next couple of months, they'll be coming from South America. So they'll actually be on a plane, a jet plane, picked a week earlier, delivered into a central distribution facility. That central distribution facility then has a two or three day transit to get to the end user. We're picking our stuff in the morning. It's on your shelves that afternoon. Yeah, I mean, and, and this is something people people just want this. Like I'm somebody that orders um, uh, organic food. Uh, we get a weekly delivery as an example. Um, people want to know what's going into their food. They don't really want it made halfway around or grown halfway around the world. Um, they do want it grown locally. I, I mean, I think they're willing to pay more, but if they can pay the same, I mean, that's a major breakthrough for your system. And we call that food transparency. Um, so that, and that's a big issue with food security. So everything that at our farm, it never leaves the structure. When it, when the seeds grow, the seeds grown in the structure, the seed is transplanted seven to 10 days into the cylinder or the rotary gardens. Um, and then depending on the produce, uh, lettuce in 35 days, uh, peppers, we've cut a month off of a month, an entire month off of the growth cycle of peppers, wow. about two to two to three weeks off of tomatoes. And then it's harvested right from that facility, never gets outside, don't have this, don't have the climate issues of a, a freeze, a frost, a flood, hail, ruining the crops. So food security or food transparency is really key. And it's about the same price. We can do it a little cheaper for some of the, the quicker growing leafy greens. But we're not more expensive. We're at the same price point or a little bit less. And you don't have the issue of, of pests and so forth and, um, you know, traditional biological kind of uh, infections like mold and, and what have you. I mean, it's it seems like a pretty great solution. So I'm going to jump over to your Kickstarter project. You guys have just launched it. You're kind of just out of the gate. You're raising $67,000 uh, for people that back this project. So for the people that back this project, you know, what are they backing? Well, I think they're back in the future of farming. And I've said that uh, many times. Um, the vertical growing station, uh, we're now assembling the parts and pieces to make it uh, almost fully automated. And like I said before, we're using, except for the rotary gardens themselves, which are patented, um, you're looking at a system that can be deployed uh, within a matter of weeks, not years. Uh, you can be farming and feeding a community in a matter of a couple of months. And then once that occurs, you're doing it every month, uh, depending on what you're planning. Um, so what, what they're backing is the fact that we wanna build the final version of the vertical growing station or the VGS. So that can may, be made available to everybody 
and we are doing some consulting right now actually just from the Kickstarter program uh, one of the investors called and said you know how do you do this and how do you know so much about this or how do you know so much about that and I said well the vertical growing station is giving us some of the data but we're really looking at trying to have this device where you can pick up the phone and say I'd like six of these and can you ship them to this location mm -hmm. and we can give you standard operating procedures and an equipment list and you can be up and operating in a week. So is, is this something that you guys are planning on packaging yourselves or is it, are you really just selling the plans to them that anybody can make them themselves? Well I think right now we're trying to figure that out but really what I, I think what we look at is if someone wants to do this you have to have some background knowledge of this type of farming. I don't call it growing, I call it farming. Um, and growing in the vertical growing station, the wheels, the cylinders. So we're trying to we're, we're trying to basically perpetuate uh, disciples, if you will, uh, that can do this uh, within a community, within a state, within a region. Uh, rather than you know go out and get 100 acres, go out and get 25,000 square feet with a 20 foot high ceiling, and grow that equivalency. So we're and we're we're trying to say this is a this is right now this is probably the best and most sustainable way to do it. So, I mean, I think that this, this is amazing. This is something that, I mean, I would buy into in a second myself. You know, personally, I mean, I'm a big fan of these kinds of things. And I've often thought about, you know, should we buy a little plot of land to start growing our own vegetables or shared farming or any of these things? I mean, this is something that you could actually have um, in your backyard, in your barn in the back, or or, or a lot of municipalities Correct. might actually start these kind of programs. Correct. And we're, we've actually been approached on a smaller level uh, before we got into the Kickstarter program to do this at some small colleges that have a small commissary or uh, food service to try to produce at least the lettuce portion mm -hmm. uh, for them fresh. And you can do that. And you could, uh, you know, with the vertical growing station, the density, with very little electricity, there's not a lot of uh, water usage. Uh, there's just not a lot of things. So, yeah, you can put it um, in a building. Uh, we just happen to have the six high seems to be the sweet spot. So, we look at the old buildings that are underutilized, not utilized now because of the economy that have been vacant for two or three years. But for the fact that we can go in there, we can go in there tomorrow and be growing stuff in three weeks. Yeah, and I think that's extraordinary. Mylan, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, www.greenspiritfarms, farms with an S, greenspiritfarms.com. If you'd like to check out and back Green Spirit Growing Systems, go to Kickstarter, search for Green Spirit Farms, and click the Back This Project button. For more Crowded Places videos, you can visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash crowdedplacestv. I'm Curtis Hollister. Thanks so much for watching.